a little math every day is good for everybody. Mathematics in the house. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Mathematics in the house. I'm Matt Maddox, and I'm in the house. In the house. I'm so glad you could join me today. Carl and I were just about to go off on our math adventure, and this week's math adventure is extra delicious. But before we do, we've got to make sure that we do our number of the day. So Carl's here, I'm here, you're here, and I'm glad we are, because it's always nice to have someone to talk about different ideas with, because as I always say, we learn better when we learn together. Together, that's right. So we're all here except for On Du Trois. Have you seen On Du Trois? Not there with you, is she? On du toi! On du toi! <sighs> I have an idea. Well, Carl, I guess we're gonna have to go on our math adventure without on du toi today and without doing the number of the day. Je suis là! Je suis là! <laughs> Calm down, on du toi. No, it's alright. We're not. I was just joking. But c'était pas drôle. I'm sorry. You're absolutely right. It's not, it's not nice to tease. No, mais c'est correct. Uh. We were just about ready to get started. Do you have, uh, do you have the number of the day today? Oh, je l'ai oublié. You forgot it. Oui. That's okay. Do you want to run and grab it? <laughs> that was super quick. Way to go, on Merci. All right, so the number of the day is, may I see it, s'il vous plaît? Bien sûr. The number of the day today is 12. Le numéro 12. All right, 12 is a really interesting number. Wonder what we can have 12 of. What are some of the things that we can do with 12? Uh, on du toi, can I put you over into your, your seat of honor <laughs> and while you hold our number of the day yes, for everyone to see? Uh, and what I want you guys to do is come up with some way that we can show 12. Do you have 12 of something there in your house? Or all of the different ways that we can make 12. So go ahead and put the pause button in. Where did those come from? You got 12 of them? Wow, that was fast. This thing's like time travel. That's crazy. You guys are back so fast. Uh, so what have, what have you come up with? How can we make... That's a really good one. I like playing board games too, and I know that I'll never roll a 13 if I'm using two dice, because the highest number we can make with two dice is 12. We have two groups of six. Six on one dice, six on the other. That's a really great way to make 12. And, oh, Carl, that's really interesting too. If we put our two sixes together, we actually have three groups of four. It's two sixes, three groups of four. That's really interesting. And Et deux six font une douzaine. That's right, on du toi. Sometimes we call a dozen. We use the word dozen to describe something that's 12. And I just happen to have a dozen eggs here. <laughs> eggs typically come in dozens. I don't know why, but it's pretty interesting that they come in two rows of six. So again, two groups of six makes a dozen eggs or 12 eggs. Oh. Uh, why do I have eggs lying around? Well, Carl and I have been busy making some cookies that we're going to send to our cousins. And we got our first batch up and running here now, and I wonder how these are going to take... I said it, didn't I? Our math adventure's about to start! I said wonder! Wonder! So, it's time to put on our notice and wonder goggles. Of course you have a pair of no notice and wonder goggles. If you have a pair of hands, or some cardboard tubes, or some swimming goggles, whatever you like, just anything that will allow us to look at the world around us and notice interesting things and ask really interesting questions. My notice and wonder goggles this week come to us from a very uh, talented local artist. It's my daughter. Aren't they fantastic? So let's put on our notice and wonder goggles and see what we can find inside our cookie dough. That's a good one. You notice that it's chocolate chip cookie dough. And you wonder if everyone's gonna like chocolate chip cookie dough. I really should have thought of that question beforehand, hey? 
Hmm. I noticed that the recipe says that it'll make 20 cookies. And I wonder if that's going to be enough. And... Carl's saying we have 10 cousins that we need to make for. So that that's fine, right? 20 cookies for 10 cousins. That's two each. Do you wonder if that's going to be enough? Probably not. How many should we send each cousin? In dozen! Of course! We'll send them a dozen! A dozen for each cousin! I love it. Alright, so I think we found our math adventure for today. So, here's what we're gonna do. If this batch only makes 20 cookies, do I have enough to make all of the cookies for all of the cousins? No! I don't think I do, but how many... how many batches of cookies do I need to make? This seems like a job for you and your math adventurer partner. Are you ready? So we're gonna push the pause button. I'm only gonna show it for like a split second so you gotta catch it. But what I want you to do is come up with a strategy. How can we figure out how many batches we need to make so that every cousin gets 12 cookies? Are you ready? Did you catch it? You caught it, didn't you? And I froze with like a weird look on my face, didn't I? Every, every time, every time. So, do you have a strategy? How are we gonna figure out how many cookies we need to make and how many batches we need to make if we can only cook them in batches of 20? Well, of course we're gonna get organized a little bit, aren't we? Here are my 10 cousins, and each one is going to get a dozen cookies. So let's think about this a little bit. Let's uh, take it to the whiteboard. Carl had a really interesting strategy. Carl, do you wanna walk us through it? Right, so we're gonna start by drawing our 20 cookies. Let's get our first batch into the oven, right? All right, so you wanna see how fast I can draw 20 cookies? Watch this, on your mark, get set, go. There, that was fast, wasn't it? <laughs> All right, so we have 20 cookies in our first batch. You can see that I've got one 10, and another 10 makes 10, 20. 20 cookies in our first batch. And Deb here is going to get 20 of them. So, well, let's let's give Deb 20. Let's give her 10. Let me get a different colored marker here so that we can see this a bit better. We get Deb 10 cookies and two more. That's another really interesting way we can make 12, isn't it? So we've got 10 and two more, and that's going to Deb. Deb Got, has her 12 cookies. Now, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight left over. Is that enough for Joe? No, it's not. So we're gonna have we're gonna have to bake another batch of cookies. Alright, Carl, here we go again. New speed drawing of cookies world record. Here we go. On your mark. Get set. Go! And time. All right, pretty good, hey? So let's see, we've got eight cookies left over from before. So we've got eight cookies that are gonna go to Joe. How many more do we need for Joe? Well, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. We need four more from this group here. So that means Joe is going to get four and eight. So Joe is getting eight and four to make his 12. Now, do I have enough for Anne? I'm pretty sure, let's double check. We've got 10 and two more over here, but you know what, let's count them down from 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. There's 12 cookies right there, and that's going to Anne. Some of my lines are crossing over here, but that's okay. And now we've got four left over. Hmm. Oh, Carl, we gotta get back into the uh, back into the kitchen. Let's make another batch of cookies. All right, here we go. Let's go. I'm gonna go for another personal best. Whew, that's a lot of cookies. Here we go. On your mark, get set, go. Time. All right. So we had four left over. Deb's got her twelve. Joe got eight and four. Anne got her 12, we've got four left over for Sam, which means Sam needs four 
5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 more out of this. 8 more out of this one to make his 12. So let's circle off of those 8. And 4 more makes Sam's 12. So Sam got 4 and 8. And that's 12. Now, do we have enough for Jan? We might have just enough for Jan. I can see 10 here and then 2 more. Well, that's a full dozen right there left over. So that works out pretty well for Jan. Jan gets her 12. So this is pretty good. Now, let's stop for a second because I've, I've used all of the cookies. I have none left over so far. I've done one, two, three batches of cookies and they are able to serve one, two, three, four, five of my cousins. I'm halfway through my cousins and I'm about to start over again. So I wonder, do I need to keep counting groups, Carl? What do you think? I can just basically do what I've done one more time. I can make two groups of everything that I've made. So we're going to do a giant times two here. So if I've done one, two, three batches. Oh, let me move up a little bit so you can see what I'm drawing here. If I've done three batches here. And I do that twice. That means I'm going to need... Carl, are you ready for this? Let's see if I can draw this number off right upside down. A six. It's a backward six, but it's a six nonetheless. Let's try that again this way. We need six batches. Carl, I think, I think we're going to need some more eggs. Um, I don't, I don't know if we've done this correctly or not. I think, I think I need to call a professional. I think I need to call the creator of this recipe. I think I need to call Holly Baker. Let's see if I can get her on the phone here. All right, Holly Baker. It's ringing. Hello? Hey everyone, it's Holly Baker. How are you doing? I'm great, hi everyone. So, we need your help. Carl and I are making cookies for our cousins. And we're using the recipe you gave me last week. Do you remember this one? I do, that's great. It makes 20 cookies, right? It does. So I've got 10 cousins, and we want to send each cousin a dozen. Dozens for cousins. Okay. Dozens for cousins. So how do you make all of the cookies that you make? So you have 10 people, mm -hmm. and you want to get 12 cookies each. That's right. That's 120 cookies. I just happen to have 120 cookies right here. No, you don't. Yeah. Crazy. That's a lot of cookies, and they look delicious, by the way. Well, thank you. So now that, now that we know how many you need, you need 120. Well, all I need to do is count by batches of 20, because there's 20 in a batch. So why don't we count those together? Sure. You see my cookies here? So yep. can, let's move one batch. These are rows of 10. So two rows of 10 are 20, so that's one batch of 20. Okay. I could, do a, I could do another batch of 20 here. And I could do uh, batches of 20 until I get to 120, and I could count up. Or, in other words, I could divide 120 by 20. That's so brilliant. Yeah, but as a baker, though, I had to remember all kinds of proportions. One way I always do that is I know that I need three batches of cookies to make five dozen. So I've got to make 10 dozen. How many batches is that again? That would be six. So it's double that. What if I had five more cousins? You have five more cousins, 15, cookie, 15, 15 dozen cookies, that would be nine batches. What if I added five more cousins for 20 cousins? 20, you need 12 batches. Wow, that's really interesting. Yeah, each time your number of cousins go up by five, you're, you're, I go up by three. The number of batches we need goes up by three. That must be what they mean by the by proportion. Well, thank you so much, Holly Baker. I can't wait to taste those cookies, and I hope these ones turn out just as good as yours. I hope they are. They're great. Bye for now. Bye. So that's a really interesting idea, that every time the number of cousins goes up by fives, I need three more. Hmm. Oh. So a proportion is when two numbers move together. 
but not always at the same equal amount. Right, because as the number of dozens I needed went up by five, I needed three more batches. I wonder how many cups of sugar we'll need, or how many chocolate chips. Oh, Carl, we better get baking. But now we know that we need six batches for all of our cousins to get a dozen cookies. So we did some addition today. We looked at the number 12 or the number dozen. Uh, we even talked a little bit about division and proportions with the help of our good friend, Holly Baker. So I guess there's only one more thing to do and that's to say goodbye. I guess I gotta go. go, go, go. But I'll see you next time. It was great. We had a blast. We had some fun doing that. And I can't wait to see you next time. See you next time, everybody. Oh, I can't wait to get my hands on these cookies. Carl, we've got some baking to do. Let's go.